to dance and have a life in dance, but I wanted more than just to train in a studio. I wanted uh, liberal arts. And Bennington offered a very serious degree in the performing arts. So there I was. And in my freshman year, um, this was in Vermont, by the way, a very progressive place, but wildly expensive. Uh, student-teacher ratio was eight to one. You were groomed to do something in the world, and it's still true. I did not know that this was a period when Bennington was concentrating on the arts. I was there at the right time, unknowingly, you know, it benefited enormously, needless to say. So the freshman year, instead of studying Dance History 101, we had something called Structure and Style. That's very Bennington. Yeah, not, not academic as academic is known. And so I heard all about this great giant of modern dance named Martha Graham. Well, we all knew that Isadora had planted the seed, Isadora Duncan, to move away from the ballet. And next came Ruth St. Dennis and Ted Sean. Martha danced with Miss Ruth, both of them, in Santa Barbara, she discovered them. So I heard, all about this great force, right? And I said, well, what about everybody else? I didn't know how egalitarian I was going to be. <laughs> well, I have to see how good she is. So uh, I go, the first weekend I go to New York when there was a Graham season on Broadway. I went, and of course, it was very powerful. But I said, oh, she's so creative. This is amazing, having been brought up only in the ballet and jazz, right? Whoa. The next year I went to the, her, the next season and I said, but she's doing the same movement as she did last time. I didn't understand that a choreographer develops a language of their own. I was just taught that you can make up movement and it can be taken seriously. It can express what you want. You don't, it's not traditional in other words. So the second year I thought, oh gee, she's just doing it. <laughs> the third time I went, I said, oh my God. This is powerful theater. This is equal to Eugene O'Neill and Aaron Copeland, all the other arts in America. This is mature work. And it was so relevant and it was so sensuous. It was compelling. It was not entertaining. It was compelling. And I began to sense the difference. So, but still, when, when I graduated, I knew I was headed for New York. My, my wonderful teacher, Bill Bales, a great, great composition teacher and life teacher, he, he said the day I graduated, now you know what dancing is and what it means to you. Now go get some more technique. You can get that anywhere. That was such perspective. Kids today don't have that perspective. So, okay, I go to New York, which in itself is a big journey, big encounter, but I, I was so excited, you know, <laughs> I was green still, and I tried other places, right? I still, th I still didn't want to follow just because everybody said she was great. I wanted to find out for myself, so I went all kinds of other places. Jose Limon even gave me a scholarship. I'd never had one in my, oh, I had one little one, but he gave me a scholarship. That was thrilling. I didn't last there because much as I loved it, my body wasn't changing. And I, and I ended up at the Graham School because even though I thought it was a very strange neurotic place, and I was right, <laughs> uh, my body changed immediately. I could feel what was happening. And I said, oh my God, you cannot lie with this movement. You cannot make it look like something. It has to be something. In other words, it, it was the deepest I had ever experienced dance, and it, it's still true. And the thing that really makes Martha Graham so extraordinary is that not only did she create a great original body of work, but she created a technique of dancing. Nobody in the history of dance in, in Western civilization has done that. One person. She created it in order that dancers could perform her works. In other words, it came from the same place.
because they were short-sighted and because it was so eager, I used to take class up near the front. Not in the front row, because then you have to remember everything, but in the second row. <laughs> and one day, one night, Martha, Martha came in. Somebody else was teaching, but she came in to visit one of her classes. I thought, oh, wow, here I am, like five feet in front of her. And people were scared of her. Well, some part of my Torian determination said, I'm not going to be scared of this woman. The whole point is she is human. She's not superhuman. She's human. But it was tricky. <laughs> and after class, she, called, she went like this. I thought, oh, my God. She called me over. And she asked me, no, she didn't ask me my name. What, she asked me where I had studied. And I said, Bennington. And she said to me two things. She, she said, I had to put my hand on her back under the shoulder blade. She, no, she put her hand on mine. No, no, I, I, I got it right the first time. And she said, this is the promise of wings, this muscle. And she put her hand on mine. She said, you see, there's nothing there yet, dear. Now you have to go and work. I knew what she meant. She's talking about the spiral. She's talking about this. And she said to me, you're going to be very beautiful one day but your body is still locked. Well, I went home two feet off the ground. I can see a locked body very quickly. I, you know, I, I just needed time, but that's... Whew. My body started to change. I could feel pop, more power, more beauty coming there in, in a month than I had in any other school I'd been to. I knew how to make it look right, but I knew deep down. See, the Limon technique is based on principles called fall and rebound. Well, I had such big energy that I would throw myself all over the place. I, I had no control. But with the Graham technique, you have to go inside. And that's exactly where I had to be. And then I found power, I found control. Not from my head, it was organic. What, her theater values were so organic, there was no decoration. Some people said that Martha must have studied yoga, but she didn't. She hadn't. She just was tuned in physically the same way, that deeply. And her technique did not start at the bar, doing exercises for the legs and whatnot. It started on the floor, and it grew and it makes organic sense what she did. She also made it a ritual, not an exercise class. So emotionally and spiritually, artistically, it had much more power. And she was laughed at. People made fun of how, they called her melodramatic. It's, it's a relative term. They just weren't that used to that much drama. Other dancers, all oh, those Graham dancers, they were made fun of because it's so deep and so serious. I mean, it was the studio was also called the home of the pelvic truth. You know, there were lots of good jokes. <laughs> so when you use the word organic, I think we understand yeah. that. That comes from the, the soil, from the roots of, of what you're trying to build. But can you, can you explain uh, a little more? It's a very more? important word because it has to do with integrity. It has to do with wholeness, that every part of the body, every, every part that was on stage relates to, this, to one thing. In other words, you, the body is not trained in isolation. In ballet, the body, is, the arms and the leg, everything's trained separately and held together. In Graham, it starts from the center because emotionally, Martha said, that's where movement comes from. Isadora Duncan said the same thing. This great big woman stood in front of a mirror and said, where does movement come from? And that's, that took a, the whole course away from the ballet. It was not about appearing beautiful. It was not about design. My choreography came from my dancing, not from my mind. Of course my mind helped. I have to have imagination, a picture thing. Martha started this. 
her idea of choreography was expression from the body, not des large designs of groups organizing s steps. In, but we don't even use the word step. We use the word movement. That's very telling. Most people think choreography is this other, no, of orchestration. Of course it is that. But Martha started something. She couldn't help it. That's who she was. And she thought of herself first as a dancer. That's very interesting to me. Because probably I do too. <laughs> I see myself in all my dances. The type I have to teach, when I teach a work of mine or choreograph a new one, I have to teach so much about dancing. And somebody said, well, that's like the Yates quote. How can we tell the dancer from the dance? Yeah, that's it. And that's powerful stuff, but it takes a lot of work. <laughs> it takes a lot of work. In other words, it is really not entertaining. It's something else. The poor darling, you know, when she started out, her friends were saying, it looked ugly compared to the ballet, you see? Parallel and flexed and serious, uh, her hands like this. And, and even her friends were saying, Martha, do you have to do this? <laughs> well, you know, my parents, do you really want to do this? You know. In other words, she created a new aesthetic. That goes on in the history of art, any art. Mm -hmm. But, you know, even though we really are at the end of the line in the arts because we're the body and we're we're thought of as entertaining and frivolous and exciting and but but not really capable of communicating the deep truths of being a human being martha changed that and jose did it himself too jose limon it was a great period And there is, you see, the body is the most immediate. You are your instrument. That's the only art form like that. Well, the voice, the voice, singer. An actor has part of it. But a dancer, it's completely oneself. I mean, Marion Woodman said the, the body is the unconscious in its most immediate form. Wow. That's powerful. And Martha tapped right into that and she choreographed the Greek myths from a woman's perspective. She made all the psychologists go and restudy everything. Before the word feminist, she I'm sure she never heard of it. She couldn't help it. This is this she was just a powerful woman. And and her way was more emotional and physical and less spiritual and intellectual. Unfortunately, she was wildly alcoholic. See, she, Martha never had the support emotionally. She had financial support later by Bessie Vita Rothschild, but that, at the beginning, she had to go it on her own. Now, Roosevelt invited her to the White House and she had to go raise the, at the train fare. Yeah, this is a pioneer. Mm -hmm. So I was taking her classes, but she wasn't teaching. Her, te her, te her dancers were teaching. Occasionally she would teach, but she was in another dimension most of the time. Or drunk. The poor woman, you know, problem. But she would say phenomenal things if you could. <laughs> because she had a poet's soul. She became not a great person. She was a great artist, but not a great person. And I understand why now. She was very manipulative because anybody to me who, who is manipulative thinks they can't get what they want directly. They have to do it indirectly. And I realize that so many women are like that. I tend to be forthright <laughs> because I don't want to be that way. And I, I pay the price for that. Too. What's the legacy of Martha today? Uh, it's confused at the moment. It's only in hands of people like myself and David and Danny and other people in Japan and you know around the world. There are people practicing, evolving it. 
but um, she was a great pioneer and she had to give her life to make a difference. I mean, she, she made dance grow up. So what did Martha give you? Oh, my, you know, the, the, she opened the door, I'm sure. She, she said, this is the road. I took it. It's possible. Oh, good, nobody's done that in Canada. That's what I'll do. And, yeah, it wasn't that hard. It's just as long as you're willing to work when nobody knows quite what you're doing. But I'd heard all her stories, you see. So, and, and when I hear about people talking about f needing to feel safe before they can choreograph, I, I never heard of such a thing, not in the 60s. <laughs> I, I had no idea that an artist was supposed to feel safe. You were supposed to risk, you were supposed to give yourself to something, you know. And I'd seen it done, and it was so powerful and so beautiful that it's just that I also, oh, the other thing about Martha, she was eloquent with words. Most dance people and yoga people are not very good with language. She spoke beautifully. She wrote beautifully. Now, her, her biography is a bit the way she hoped it had been her life. It was, you know, it was a lot of imaginative stuff. Because she was a poet in there. She couldn't help it. She couldn't write just facts. That's too boring for her, I'm sure. And, and so, I mean, to, to write poetry, what I've done in the last few years, since my body said we've had enough, is not so unnatural. It's not so unusual mm -hmm. to me. Because, I mean, she didn't write poetry, but her dances were. <laughs> okay. Good.